So let us start with the first party, our defending champions, the Liberal Party. And they are run by this man, Yostin Trudeau, who, let's meet him. Hey, I'm about to head into a big winter, winter rally. Their energy is incredible, and I can't wait. Mais l'énergie est incroyable à travers le pays. We have a big choice to make. I choose forward. I choose forward. What a putz. Okay, so that's Justin Trudeau. He is a liberal, the leader of the Liberal Party. And he has a superpower. His superpower is nice hair, though. Basically, look at that sexy guy. This is how he got most of his votes last time, is because people looked and said, he's good looking. And yes, I did talk to women who said his butt and his hair were the reasons they voted for him. So his superpower is essentially being better looking than all the other uggos running for prime minister. Oh boy, what a real country we live in. All right. So that is that. Now, who is the Liberals' campaign manager? Who is running their election? Who's trying to get the... So let's meet the Liberals' campaign manager here, and it is the media. The media is running the Liberal campaign. The person trying the hardest to get Justin Trudeau elected is the mainstream media. This would be the CBC, Global News, CTV, basically printing biased nonsense stories, or as I talked about, fake news that omits real facts in favor of Justin Trudeau. So that is their campaign manager. All right. What are some of their policies? As we know, one of the founding principles of Justin Trudeau's Liberal Party is terrorists before veterans. Veterans are asking for too much because, honestly, you know, what do veterans give other than everything they can? Um, and he is, he, at the Liberal debates, he was the one who said, I believe the Liberal Party is the, believes that the terrorists have the right to keep their citizenship because I believe it. He's the man who, even though there was a legal case against Omar Carter, uh, terrorist extraordinaire, he paid Omar Carter ten and a half million dollars. Um, this was an executive decision from the Prime Minister's office, and this will become a bit of a theme here um, to give them uh, terrorism funding. All right, so before we move off, uh, let's get to sort of the corruption of Justin Trudeau because this is part of the policy, um, and this is sort of what he believes. Um, SNC Lavalin, what is it, what's happening? This is sort of the most indicative thing of Justin Trudeau's entire, we'll call it political ethos, political theory. Now we have the previous ethics violation, which was him taking a private vacation with the Aga Khan, who is a registered lobbyist, that's a big no-no, and then lying about it. That is small potatoes compared to this, because the SNC-Lavalin scandal is the biggest scandal in Canadian history and threatens the entire, I would say, structure of our government and country moving forward. Because, as I've said, in America, right, there are three different types of government. There are three branches of government. You have the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. Okay. Now, in Canada, because it's the first past the most parliamentary system, our executive and our legislature is combined into one. That means the Prime Minister has a hand in creating the laws that go to Parliament. Now you can say that he's technically not so much an executive because he himself has admitted he's just a figurehead, but the Prime Minister's office itself has been acting in a quasi-dictatorship form. So we talked about the PMO was involved in the Omar Carter um, affair. They were involved in another um, investigation into terrorism and corruption the RCMP had, uh, which cost us $33 million. But so we have a balance between powers, or supposed to in a democracy. But the executive and the legislature, so it's like, think of the president and the house is combined into one. Then you have a Senate. Now the Senate in America, Congress is pretty useless, but what is more useless than the American Senate? The Canadian Senate. The Canadian Senate is absolutely nothing. Does nothing, hear no evil, see no evil, do nothing. It does nothing, it serves no purpose at this time. So it's effectively useless. So you have the entire legislature of an executive branch under the control of the Prime Minister's office. That means, the judiciary is the only sort of check and balance we have within the system to keep him under power. And the SNC-Lavalin affair is Justin Trudeau taking money from a, a personal donor in SNC-Lavalin, a Quebec company, Quebec construction company, so basically the mafia, to create a special law into Canadian rule, which is the Deferred Prosecution Agreement for their crimes in Libya um, at the beginning of the 21st century. Now, the whole point of this was to 
avoid uh, a, a, a criminal conviction. That way they could continue to bid on government contracts. Right? It wouldn't disqualify them. It just means the government couldn't hand them contracts. So no one was actually going to lose jobs, and SNC and Lavalin themselves have admitted this, but Justin Trudeau has, uh, he did kick out the Attorney General for not uh, siding with him and, you know, basically throw, basically combining the judiciary under the Prime Minister's office. Um, he then replaced it with David Lametti. So this is the policy of Justin Trudeau's liberals. It is totalitarian, it's not totalitarian, well, it, it, the left is a bit totalitarian, but it is dictatorial, to say the least. It is combining all the executive power, all the power of government, into the fist of the Prime Minister's office. And it has been used consistently um, against, uh, against you know, his political tractors, whether it's Jane Philpott, Jody Wilson-Raybould. So part of the liberal platform, it doesn't say it there, but it has been clearly expelled. Uh, and if you vote for Justin Trudeau, what you are voting for, you are voting for a quasi-dictatorship. What you are voting for is someone who will concentrate all the powers of government into one office. And remember, I try and say this to people on the left or the right all the time. If you hate Stephen Harper, okay, you hate Stephen Harper. He's evil. He's evil. He's going to eat your kids, right? Look out behind you. Stephen Harper might be there. If you hate him and you really, really hate him because he's so evil, don't give Justin Trudeau the power you don't want Stephen Harper to have. For the Americans, right, don't give Barack Obama any power you don't want Donald Trump to have. Because all the executive power Barack Obama accrues means the next president in line, Donald Trump, has those powers as well. This is giving the entire power of the Canadian system to one man and his sort of staffers in office. That is so dangerous. So that is the number one policy is, you know, corruption to the highest degree, arrogance, lying. And Justin Trudeau says he cares about jobs and he'll always protect Canadian jobs, um, except in Alberta. Um, a big, big F you to Alberta is on, I believe if you go to the Liberal Party platform, it does say, screw you, Alberta, um, right there. Okay, so what, what, is, uh, what is also in it? Um, their big crowning achievement is the child benefit. Um, so what the Liberals have done is basically, if you have kids, they just throw a bunch of money at you. Um, if you have a basic understanding of economics, you understand why this is a problem. Um, you can't just, you know, sort of subsidize these things. Um, it is a bad economic policy if you have people who can come here, not have a job, collect welfare, and then support a family of 10 kids. And the way they support a family of 10 kids is because each kid becomes a paycheck, right? When you have kids just becoming a paycheck, you're going to get neglectful parents and parents who just say, yeah, let's just have a kid for a paycheck. This ends up being a massive drain in the system. Not everyone, oh, I have a kid and he's a this and a single mom or the thing. Yeah, okay, exceptions. But when you mass incentivize certain behaviors, they're going to happen. You're incentivizing, you know, bad parenting decisions here. So they cut different tax uh, credits. Tax credits, although not perfect, and I do like how the People's Party will make the actual libertarian argument because it's about time someone does that. Tax credits for good behavior are much better than subsidizing random behavior because that will just ruin the economy. Uh, the child welfare benefit is is just it's 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 it's, it's an economic crisis waiting to happen. It's it's a it's never like it's never worked and it never will. It's it's just building a giant. It's it's throwing money into a hole. Okay. Um, now tax and spend, tax and spend, tax, 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 um, tax on the wealthy. Now. One of the things that the uh, media will tell you, um, and the media, of course, being Justin Trudeau's campaign manager, is when people say tax cuts, they'll say it's a tax cut for the rich or tax cuts of this. They will worry about government revenue. <gasps> How are we going to make up the government revenue? God forbid people keep some of their own money. But what we are not going to talk about here is Justin Trudeau came in and increased taxes, right? It's 92% of families pay more taxes under Justin Trudeau than they did beforehand. No matter what he says, he's lying. But Justin Trudeau increased taxes, government revenue went down. Justin Trudeau increased taxes, government revenue went down. How could this happen? One capital flight, right? So if you want to tax the ultra wealthy, they can just move, right? They have the financial means to move out of the country and go somewhere that is not attacking their business. Capital flight, <laughs> Venezuela. Two, the LaFleur curve. There is a relationship between how much you tax and the eventual drop-off. So there is an economic phenomenon known that right, you can't just tax people at 99%. Because once you start taxing people higher and higher, your, your, your revenues actually start to go down at a point. And the reason this is, is because people then have less money to spend. So uh, we'll go over this more on the conservative plan, but when people have more money 
to spend, right? They go into the economy, people are doing better, small businesses thrive more, right? If small businesses are doing $100,000 of business under Justin Trudeau, these people are tight economically, and they start to do $180,000 when you of business once once the economy improves and people have more money to spend, right? You're actually getting tax revenue on $180,000, not $100,000. And also, this is why the corporate tax is bad, because, and the payroll tax, oh, oh, nuke, the, nuke the payroll tax, and the carbon tax and the, and, 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 uh, the corporate tax. Because these are taxes that um, disincentivize hiring. So when you have people who, because of high tax rates and corporate taxes and reasons, can't get hired, right? So what's the t you know how much taxes can you get out of, of someone making fifty five thousand dollars a year? Let's say okay seven thousand five hundred. Make up a number, right? That's how much you get out of them, right? At twenty percent. Now, if you increase the tax rates, you have a lot of people who would be making fifty five thousand dollars a year. Instead, they're on welfare because they don't have jobs because of the economy. So instead of paying in the couple thousand dollars from their taxes, they're now taking out. This is the LaFau curve. This is why we increase taxes and government revenue decreased. Almost every single study you, you will see on these parties' platforms and, and the cost-benefit analysis done, if it's done by the C... Now, there are some other organizations, but if it's done by the CBC, Global News, CTV, I can almost guarantee you, I will bet this Canadian flag and your first child's life, I will bet you that it is a univariate analysis, which means they take one variable and they just do some basic addition of subtraction, right? So if we're going to tax increase taxes on the ultra wealthy Jagmeet Singh's plan, right? We're just going to increase taxes on people making over $200,000 from, you know, 50 to 75%, right? Just going to say, okay, at their current rate, they're making, you know, that's an extra $100,000 times this amount, right? Addition multiplication. It will never take into effect what are the effects of increased tax rates on businesses and what would the new situation be? That's a multivariate analysis. Almost all the party platform analysis you'll see from CBC and the others are univariate analysis. And essentially, um, stupid propaganda is, is how I will phrase that. Okay, uh, what else is part of the platform? A bribe to the media. So this campaign manager is actually the most well-paid campaign manager in the history. Uh, $595 million they're paying their campaign manager at the mainstream media. This is a media bribe. So, as we said in the SNC-Lavalin, it is a concentration of all three powers of government. The media likes to call itself the fourth estate, the final check and balances. They're going to keep the government honest. Well, one, the CBC is part of the government, so, eh, but now all of the medias will be bailed out with $600 million, 595, 600 million. Oh, that would be a, an ethical catastrophe. Now, I've said, the real way the media is uncompetitive, one, because they lie a lot and no one really trusts them, public trust has eroded in these institutions. That's number one. But number two, there actually are economic conditions on the media that make it sort of unfair in the marketplace. This would be, um, there's different taxes in advertising, so it's way more expensive to advertise in a newspaper or on a mainstream because there's taxes included than just going onto the internet. So like newspapers, one, dying because it's a newspaper who, who reads the newspaper other than my grandmother who then sends it to us and we don't even need it because we have the internet. Right? So if, unless you're my grandmother or maybe your grandmother, you're probably not reading the newspaper, grandfathers included. So another reason, though, is these, these publications, it's more expensive to advertise on them. So the, even the government, when they do their advertising, they don't even advertise with the institutions they're bailing out because it's, not as, it's, it's, it's way more expensive to do so. So the real way, if you want to help the media, is taking away all these taxes on, but taking away a tax that is anathema to the liberal government um, because that might be sensible. Um, now, we should talk about, you know, this was done, but the taxes they put on small businesses, doctors, and sort of uh, changing the corporate tax stru structure is, has really, really killed the Canadian economy. If you remember, all throughout Young Street, every single business all across Young had signs about stopping this uh, different tax bill. Because eventually, essentially, as a small business or as a corporation, uh, this includes doctors, um, uh, farmers, you know, independent contractors, like, you know, carpenters or whatever, um, they they could have about, it was, I think, 23%. Uh, they could, uh, if you kept your income inside your business, right, you could, about 23% of it is taxed. Whereas if you took, now, under the new rules, it's something like 78%. So it utterly kills, and this is the benefit to incorporating, is that you'd be able to sort of keep your money in the business. Now, keeping your money in your business, which is healthy for a business, um, this has now been disincentivized in the system. This is a, it's a major killer to small business, which is the backbone of our economy. Now, of course, Justin Trudeau and Bill Morneau called these people, this is doctors, farmers, and small business owners, tax cheats. Um, at the same time, they did not reform the laws that pertain to their specific trust funds, as they are trust fund babies. And Bill Morneau, before the tax credits did go in, this is the finance minister, he did sell uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stock 
in his investments that were hit by these new tax changes. So, honesty and integrity, you know, choose forward. Um, uh, so, okay, what else? So that's the media bribe. So they bought off the media, co complete corruption of the fourth estate. Um, that's, uh, um, of course, uh, globalism is a big part of their policy. This is, now Trudeau is the ultimate sort of, when we talk about globalism versus nationalism, Trudeau is, is the ultimate globalist. And when I say globalist, um, I, I, I make, always make the distinction between globalization, which I don't have a problem with, and globalism. So globalization is international trade. I think we should have free trade with America, free trade with this, you know, free trade with countries that participate in the marketplace honestly and equivocally. Okay. Globalism, though, is the opposite of nationalism, which is ceding national control to organizations like the EU or the UN, um, open borders policy. This is sort of Trudeau uh, as saying Canada has no core Canadian values. This is um, a pillar of the Liberal Party and, of course, every party to its left. Um, and he's also been in trouble because he sort of straddles the middle ground in a lot of these things. Uh, the best example is the pipeline, right? He killed the pipelines in uh, Trans Mountain, had to move. Um, could you imagine if we had independent oil right now with this nonsense going baton between Saudi Arabia and Iran? That would be great. But he sort of bought the pipeline but then killed the project. He's sort of straddling the middle here where he's not really making anyone happy and he shouldn't make anyone happy. He has a terrible approval rating because he is um, terrible. Terrible. Um, so that concludes the policies of the Liberal Party. And if I'm going to rate them out of 10, I give them um, a F out of 10. F out of 10 for the Liberal Party. Massive F, which means the real slogan of the Liberal Party is vote for us or you're racist. Uh, vote for us or you're racist, Liberals 2019. Now, what is the pathway towards victory here for the Liberals? Um, I'm going to talk about the pathway towards victory is sort of apathy, number one. Uh, apathy, uh, left-wing moral panic over uh, they, through media is, is another way. Um, if the PPC and the CPC split the conservative vote, they could walk in. They could be the leaders of a coalition left-wing nightmare government. That'd be good. Um, now, we have to talk about sort of the fatal flaw um, in the Liberal Party. So, there's a extremism. Let's bring up some. Uh, let's just run over some of their more extreme candidates because the liberals are full of them, and every party has them. But the liberals are known for them. So let's just run through some of the people here and some of the the ideology represented within the liberal party. So here we have Omar Al Gabra. Omar Al Gabra is so associated with the Muslim Brotherhood. It's not even funny. But he is on record stating that he is disappointed that Ontario rejected Sharia courts. He wants Sharia law in Ontario, and he's very angry at the seventy to sixty to seventy percent of Muslims in Ontario that voted against. Sharia law. So that's Omar al Gabra, Sharia law enthusiast. Next, we have Ikra Khalid, whose father is a senior, senior member of Jamaat e Islami. That is an organization, if you just look at their Wikipedia page, says they want a global caliphate and, and you know, destruction of all governments, Islamic caliphate all over the place. Ikra Khalid, architect of M103. Why do we take care? Next, we have Majid Johari. So Majid Johari is the man, uh, he has the arrow on top of him, not on the far, I think he'd be far left. Um, Majid Johari here is, he is a liberal MP, uh, and he is here, and the other guy with it is, is Reza Hossein Nassab. Um, that is a major cleric who the CRA says runs and promotes Iran's ideology in Canada. Um, and the cleric's son works in Majid Johari's office. So Majid Johari is a prop of the Islamic Republic of Iran. This is Khomeiniism, this is another type of extremism. And finally, the other type of extremism rampant in the Liberal Party is Khalistani movement. Um, we will use Representative Raj Gurwal here. Raj Gurwal. If you remember Raj Gurwal, this is why the media is so important. Raj Gurwal is a man. If you remember, he had a scandal. He had hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe millions of dollars in gambling debt. There was a big scandal about it. He said he was going to have to resign because you can't have an MP in hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. They become susceptible to bribes. But then he didn't resign because the next week, boom, the debt all went away. How did that happen? Because he's a Khalistani, and his uncle is literally on video in Pakistan holding an AK-47 talking about doing terrorist attacks against India. He is a pawn of the Khalistani movement, and the Indian government is pretty sure that we are, you know, infested with Khalistanis all over the place. And even an MP in the Liberal Party said that was true. So that is, that is all you need to know about the Liberal Party. We could go on for hours just how terrible they are, but we only got one.